f of x is this original function right here, x to the 2 thirds power times the quantity x minus 4. We could distribute that x to the 2 thirds, uh, but I think the intent probably was to use the product rule. So I'll use the product rule on the first board. But here's the graph. And it looks like there's only one place where there's a horizontal tangent line. There is a cusp here at 0, 0. And on the interval from negative 5 to 5, it looks like the uh, high, low point up for the function is at negative 26 point something. And at 5, the high point is 2.92. We can show that the critical numbers are 0 and 1.6 or 8 fifths. And the corresponding function values for those points are inside this interval. So this is the relative minimum, or the absolute minimum right here. And this is the absolute maximum. They occur at the endpoints of that interval. Now back to board one, and let's talk about how you find the first derivative. Equals x to the 2 thirds times the quantity x minus 4. If you're going to use the product rule, we're going to take the first function, which we'll identify as x to the 2 thirds times the derivative of the second function, which the derivative of x minus 4 is just a 1, plus the second function, which is x minus 4, times the derivative of the first function, which would be 2 thirds x to the minus 1 third. Now, let's take the time to simplify this. We've got two terms. And this negative exponent, is great. we can change that to a positive exponent by going like this. And now if I get a common denominator, I can combine the fractions. Well, I have to multiply top and bottom in this first fraction by 3x to the 1 third. So if you picture that, 3x to the 1 third, 3x to the 1 third, I finally get 3x plus 2x minus 8 over 3x to the 1 third. Which is the same as 5x minus 8 over 3x to the 1 third. And so the critical numbers are going to occur where the derivative is undefined, which means when x is 0, or when 5x minus 8 equals 0 when the numerator is zero. So the critical numbers are at zero and 1.6 or eight fifths. And to apply the first derivative test, we're gonna pick a number in each interval on the number line that these critical numbers divide the number line into, uh, find the sign of y prime in each of those intervals, and then draw little arrows to indicate increasing, decreasing, and that will identify relative maximums and minimums. So to the left of zero, like if you picture putting a negative one in here, you're going to get negative five minus eight over the cube root of minus one is minus one times three is minus three. You're going to get negative 13 over negative three is a plus. That's all we care about. When the first derivative is positive, that tells us that the original function is increasing. Pick a number between zero and eight fifths, like the number one, we get negative over positive is negative, decreasing. And a number to the right of eight fifths, like two, we get positive over positive is positive, increasing. So that tells us we have a relative. We went from increasing to decreasing. So this is a relative maximum. Uh, here we have a relative minimum.
Okay, and that's what they're asking you to do here. Critical point zero and eight fifths. They even gave you the denominator. Local maximum at X equals uh, well, I'm not sure what they're trying to say here. Okay. At, at X equals zero and F of zero equals zero. And the local minimum at X equals eight fifths and F of eight fifths. Well, we can go to here to see what F of eight fifths is right here. Negative 3.283. I think you asked around that. Now, I wanted to take some time to show you how to find the second derivative and simplify it, which would allow us to find points of concavity. Uh, this is one of them right here, but ran out of time, so maybe next time. I hope that helped, and uh, if you have any questions, post a comment.